Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Do you consider yourself creative? I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Learn to be more creative at home. I think everybody's creative, and I hate to hear it when people say, I'm not creative, because I think everyone is. I agree. I agree. I think uh, we say we're not creative, and I used to think I wasn't creative. And in fact, I was told I wasn't. And people just made this assumption because uh, I was doing technical work. But what I found was when I separated myself from that situation and uh, did some of the things we're going to be talking about today, uh, I found out I could be creative. So you really thought you weren't creative because you wanted to be an artist. So what did you think? Well, no, it's not. Well, let me put it this way. It's not that I didn't think I was creative, but when we would sit in these meetings and come up with ideas, I was usually the one sitting there not really coming up with ideas. Mm -hmm. Uh, I felt like I was creative in an artistic sense, but I really was not good at generating ideas. But Uh. once I became once it became part of my habit to do a lot of idea generation uh, later on, it became a part of who I am. And now I'm pretty good at generating ideas. So it's not that I was just inherently, I don't even think it's that I just have this inherent ability to do it. I think I just did it a lot. And, and that helped me to, um, you know, become more creative, but I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Well, I mean, yeah, it's just like anything. I mean, you have to practice it. Okay, so let's talk about getting creative and how did you get more creative and how do we suggest other people learn to be more creative? Mm -hmm. Well, before we start, I think I just think about what hurts creativity. And I'm thinking boredom, routine, I think even unhappiness. And I think also the thought that you're not creative. I think all of those things can really... Uh, just start off putting you kind of in a bad place as far as creativity goes. I, you know, that's a great way to approach it because I hadn't thought about it that way. Um, you know, what holds you back from being creative? Let me add one more that just popped into my head. Overwhelm. If you're feeling overwhelmed in any aspect of your life, it's really hard to be creative and get beyond that. So you definitely want to make adjustments and as best you can to eliminate those things from your life. And don't listen to anybody who tells you you're not creative or don't Mm -hmm. listen to your inner voice that tells you you're not creative. Oh yeah. And I think it's also this left brain, right brain. Just stop it. I don't care if you're an accountant. That doesn't mean you can't be creative. You can. And I think that creativity is a normal part of being a human. I think everybody has creativity within them. It's just kind of have you been using it or not? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a muscle. If you have never used it, you don't even know it's there. So, and I remember as a kid thinking, well, I'm going to try to compose a piece. I think I'm going to compose a song because I remember thinking, what if I'm like brilliant at it? And I don't even know because (laughs) I've never tried. Seriously, this is what I thought. I I did do one. It was not so good, but... (laughs) So I knew, could you, could you sing a few bars? No, I don't remember what it was, but it was bad. But, but, but really I didn't fully understand it. If it's something you have just a mild interest in, which I love music, but I wasn't just wanting to spend 24 hours a day on music. So, I mean, that was kind of my sign that that's probably not where my gifting was. Mm. So it's my gifting. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Well, when you look at us, an engineer and a lawyer, neither one of those things People don't have that stereotypical thought of a creative person, but then look how we turned our lives around and, and really fostered the, our creative side. Uh, well, you know, and- I think it's creative in certain ways, problem solving as an engineer. Yes, there definitely is a creative mm-hmm. component. Putting a trial together as a trial or yes, definitely a creative component, but it's not traditionally thought of or stereotypically thought of as, as necessarily creative uh, careers. No, in fact, the thing that I was really bragging about, my real gift- this weekend, I was telling Kevin, I said, you know, when there's leftovers and you're trying to find exactly the right container, 
Yeah. It's not too big or too small. I said, I am so good at that. I'm so good at knowing it's oh, if only. It's, yeah, that's right. If only I could make a career out of that, I would be so good right. at that. You just feel so satisfied when it feels. It, it just does. Right. I'm like, yes, it just barely fit. See again, bringing up those Doralex containers and mocking <laughs> anyone who doesn't have a set. Everybody sort of knows somebody who's completely overflowing with creative ideas. I hope you know someone like that and creative solutions and innovative design ideas and all this and. You might think, oh my God, how, did, how does she do mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, why can't I be like that? But yeah, what we're telling you today is you can be, you are. We all started out as children being really creative. And then, you know, somebody either told you you weren't, or, you know, you thought Susie's art project was better than yours and you got discouraged, or you went into a field that isn't necessarily stereotypically or traditionally creative. And maybe you just haven't worked that muscle. So start working it if that's what you want. You mm-hmm. have to cultivate the creativity that you want in your life and your environment can support that. Mm -hmm. Well, and another thing besides the environment, I know our title is be more creative at home, but one thing you can do to be more creative is leave your home. (laughs) (laughs) Is as much as I love And when you come back to your home, you're creative, but you've left. Right, right, right. But I think there's something to be said for leaving your house and going out and doing something completely different, experiencing something new. I think uh, getting some fresh eyes Mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, just maybe even, maybe it's a walk around the block. Maybe it's a walk. uh, Maybe you're going to the museum. Maybe you're going to your favorite store. Uh, Maybe you're doing a house tour. Any of these things. Maybe you're going to London. Maybe you're going to India. Who knows where you're going, but exactly. But any of those things I can, can really spark and start that creativity so that when you come back, you're you're going to have all this enthusiasm and excitement uh, and be ready to go. Yeah, yeah. So what we're talking about today isn't necessarily like, you know, shutting all the windows and closing the doors and just, you know, making a craft inside your house. We're talking about ways to look at the world, experience the world and bring it all back to your mm-hmm. home. And then you can spark your creativity and you might want to do things to your home, make some bold moves or make some changes in your home based on how you've perceived the world and what you've learned from being out there and in there. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So do you have some tips? Yeah, sure. It's just, it's a mindset. It's how you kind of shift your perception. First, I think you really truly have to open your mind at, to the fact that you are creative right? mm-hmm. and accept that because mm-hmm. otherwise you're always going to be sort of fighting that. Um, no matter what happens, you're, oh, well, yeah, I saw that, and, yeah, but I couldn't really translate that into something. Yes, you can. And you definitely want to do it in your home because that's, you know, the, a very important spot to all of us that are listening to this podcast and part of this community. I had an opportunity to bump into this really great quote by Winston Churchill, and uh, it just suits today. It says, we shape our buildings and afterwards they, they shape us. Oh, so, very right. Good. So we're, you know, designing all this, but then, you know, what's going on in there and what you allow to go mm-hmm. on there and the creativity that's there. It can shape you in a great way. If there's clutter and mess and all that, it's going to shape you in a different way. So your environment definitely is shaping you. So you want to be in control of, you want to put your creative stamp on it. Well, what you said about the clutter really resonates with me. And that is something that really dampens my ability to come up with ideas. Because if my house feels cluttered, that's all I can focus on. And I feel this kind of oppression from the uh, just the stuff. It's just, it doesn't feel organized and I don't feel uh, free to, to be creative. So I think getting rid of the clutter and organizing your space that you're in really relaxes you to a place where you can be creative. Because I think if you're stressed and if you're worried, if you're just in a negative frame of mind, it really does impede your ability to be creative. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. That's, you know, I mm-hmm. think that's all sort of, when I say the word overwhelm, it's all sort of part and parcel of that. You know, if you're feeling like, like I can't go on to the next task. Like yesterday I went to the grocery store and we just, for whatever reason, seemed to have absolutely no food. So it was one of those mm-hmm. giant shops and it takes you a while to put everything away. But like, I can't start doing something else or even think about something else with all that stuff all over the place, right? It's all oh, coming out of the bags. It's all got to find a home. And then you can sit down because I had to do something sort of, 
creative and crafty with my daughter. And she was like, can we do it now? I was like, no, 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 we can't do it now. We can't start that now because there's all this stuff everywhere. Let's get How all this I away. Even think? I can't think. There's too much stuff around there's too here. Much I get stuff. it. Right. So there's definitely, in addition to clearing that all away, whether it's a temporary thing like groceries that just came in the door or laundry that needs to be put away or clutter that's built up over a long period of time, you definitely can do certain things in your home to give yourself an environment that, which will actually catapult and stimulate your creativity and get it on the fast track. One thing is to associate a particular place, space, or room where you will get creative. It's almost like a Pavlovian thing, you know, with the dogs and the salivating when they ring the bell, right? So if you designate a certain space and you make it lovely and how it suits you, and if you designate the spot and in your mind, you say, when I go to this spot, this is where I write, or this is where I'm going to paint, or this is where I'm just going to sit and have some thoughts and collect my mind or focus on tear sheets that I pulled out of a magazine because I want to redo my master bedroom. If you have a spot where you go, it after a while, you will have this Pavlovian effect on you mm-hmm. that when you get to that spot, your mind will start being more creative and you'll be open to that process. I would agree with that, but I would also add to that that sometimes it takes going to a different space to be creative because if you're usually in one particular space and you're feeling stuck, I think try going to a different space. Mm -hmm. And I I mean, how many times have you heard of somebody having a great idea in the shower? I think when you're going and doing something that is not focused, like if you're trying to think of a creative idea for something specific, then I think you have to separate yourself from whatever that problem is to really get that good idea generation. So I think focusing on some mindless task really frees your brain up, especially if it's something relaxing or fun. Maybe it's working in your garden. Maybe it's arranging some flowers. Uh, maybe it is uh, just kind of sitting and, and looking at a beautiful magazine or a beautiful book. I think those things kind of free your mind up so that you can really come up with some great ideas and be creative. Good, good one. Yeah, I think that, yeah, absolutely true that I have great ideas in the shower. I also have great ideas in the middle of the night when I wake up and then I'm then I'm just racking my brain to well, remember them. <laughs> that's interesting you say that because I, I know I have thought of some things I thought were so brilliant at yeah, night. I know. And then I would think, man, I wish I had a sheet of paper. And then I started kind of remembering those things. I was like, oh, I'm going to remember that thing. And I, when I would remember some of those later, I would think, you know, that thing that seems so brilliant in my dream, now it just sounds kind of dumb. So I mean, I've had that happen too. Oh yeah, for sure. In the light of day, sometimes some of those ideas are not quite as good as No, no, no. You're thinking, boy, that was really funny. And then you think, no, that wasn't funny. It was really funny. Um, get outside your comfort zone. So this is a little hand in hand with Anita saying about going to a different place. Change things up a little bit. I do like the idea of having a dedicated place in my home where you can create you know, if you're going to be dedicated, you could be working this creative muscle. I think having a special place to do it, almost like going to the gym for your real muscles, you know, it's the same idea. But yeah, try something different. Stretch yourself. Do something alone that you usually would do mm-hmm. with someone else. I think doing something alone, like even if it's just going out for coffee by yourself or going to lunch by yourself or go to a movie by yourself, it it allows you to take in the experience in a different way. And you might notice things you didn't notice before. And then that might lead you down this creative path. Oh, I so agree with you. And I think that might be one of the keys why I felt like I became more creative once I left the corporate world is that I was by myself a lot more. And I do think that makes you more creative because you just have time for your, you're not focused on talking. And so that uh, creative energy goes into more ideas rather than uh, conversations. And I think about how you and I like to elevate the everyday and just celebrate little moments. Like I love having my morning tea with a little tea biscuit or something. Uh, That sort of thing, if you're just sitting down and having new eyes on maybe something that you see every day, but getting out that beautiful dish, the beautiful spoon, having a cup of tea. I think savoring those moments also really helps you be more creative. Yeah. I think what it is about that is if you take the time to really notice 
you know, just it's like not- really being present in the moment and mm-hmm. seeing instead of a ru- we all are in such a rush and I, you know, myself included when you can to really slow it down and really take a look at that you know, how the dew is on that leaf and why are you drawn to that particular color green? And maybe you want to incorporate that color green somewhere in your house and you don't have any green in your house right now. And why don't you, if you love it, all these things will just kind of expand your mind and lead you down a much more creative path. Take the moments, enjoy Mm -hmm. it. Think about what you're doing, then translate it into something else in your home. And the very specific things that I was reading about that can jumpstart your creativity. And one of them is adding blue. Now, am I going to have to add blue? I mean, I wear blue, so that might be enough. But they say- Maybe that's the other thing that happened. <laughs> yeah. They, they say that blue does open people's creativity. There was scientific studies done. There really? Was, yeah. There was one thing done where they had a- It was at the Architectural Digest. Uh, so they have like a trade show or convention mm-hmm. or something every year. And they did this uh, study. They had a tent that was- illuminated with all red lights and one that was illuminated with all blue lights. And just the way the people reacted to the lights, how they moved about in the space, that blue people were much happier, apparently. (laughs) Because red, (laughs) when you think about it, is, you know, we're used to, it's danger, it's blood, it's a stop sign. Action, It's all of that. It's like, Uh oh, you know, there's Mm -hmm. something could be awry here with thread, mm. you know, and whereas mm. blue is like the sky. It's peaceful. Yeah. And the water, limpid pools of blue. And it's just it was like, oh, people relax. And here's the thing. When you relax, you can be more creative. So it's all these things really make sense. And it might be just these little things that you might latch onto one or two of these things and change it up in your house. And who knows, you could be, maybe you'll be writing a song or <laughs> you'll be redecorating <laughs> your <me>. entire home. <laughs> what about this? Uh, keeping a journal to write in every day, especially, and we're talking about creativity and it can manifest itself in so many different ways. And we're talking kind of a lot about artsy things, but what about creative writing? I, there's so many people that want to write a book or they want to write a magazine article. I think there's a lot to be said for writing down your thoughts a little bit every day, or if you're wanting to write something that's fiction, just to start setting aside some time to write every day. I think if you're wanting to go into writing, it's a great idea to just sit there and write. And you can certainly type on the computer as well. If you're going to be doing, if it's just kind of a few notes, then I would probably handwrite them because I think there's some value and creativity in actually forming the letters with your hand. And I've read if it's a grocery list that you're more apt to remember what's on the list if you write it by hand than if you type it in. And I'm saying that as someone who uses an electronic list for everything. Um, I write the list, no surprise by hand, but hmm. then guess what? I leave the entire list on the counter and right, leave. <laughs> since, you, since you wrote it, you probably remember. But since Sometimes. I've done it digital, right? Uh, since mine is done digitally and I have everyone else's list from my family, I just pull it up on my phone when I'm at the store and it's all there. I think that's a great thing to spend time writing every day, even if maybe you're not interested in become a, becoming a writer. I think there's some value in that as far as a creative outlet and a way to, for you to, because maybe if, even if you have some creative ideas, it's a good idea to kind of write those down to help you remember some, some things that you were thinking about. Yes. And I think it's a great way to form a habit to be creative. I was listening to a podcast not too long ago. And I can't remember the name of it. And I can't remember the name of the woman who was interviewed, but it was very interesting. She's, she had a very high power job in style brand or something like that, but she was all like, oh, and she had a little kid and oh, baby and all this. And she, she had no time to really be creative. She decided that every day she was going to get up before her daughter woke up and she was for 10, 15, 20 minutes tops, she was going to paint with watercolors. Oh. Uh-huh. Now she was never even a watercolors before, but mm-hmm. you know, she's like, like total mom thing. She's like, well, I can, I can do watercolor because that won't be messy and I can clean it up and I want to do this. Mm-hmm. Right. So she was like, it's, I don't and know. It's quick drying. And it's quick, quick drying, drying and I don't really, mm-hmm. but she was getting it done and she made a dedication to herself to do this every day. And she'd been doing it for about a year and a half when they interviewed her at the podcast. And I mean, the, what the woman said about how 
basically she had turned her crazy life around and felt like not only was she, she having a creative outlet, but she was in a job where it was very high demand. People were asking her things all day long. Then she came home to a toddler or you know had a toddler in the morning and then in the evening and in the bathtub and all those places who, who was always needing something from her. And this was a little something she could give back to herself. So even if you don't ever have your painting hang on a wall or your book is ever published or you decorate a room and only you enjoy it or it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. because the creativity is really there for you and it helps you in so many aspects of your life. So you want to be fostering it. Take the time to write in a journal. I think that's a great dedication to do that every day. I'm not so good at that, but as a daily thing. But I love when I stumble upon a notebook that I have jotted things down and I think, oh my God, like one of those dream thoughts, like Mm -hmm. that was dumb. Or, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot. I wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. But when you were writing your book, didn't you have a schedule where you had so much time? You had to do so much writing every day for a short amount of time. You had My book was... I, yeah, I, I self-imposed a very tight schedule. I wrote mm-hmm. a lot for a very <laughs> Yeah, you did it yours very quickly. So clearly you are very disciplined as far as your writing goes. And yes. you were able to sit down and do a lot of writing, even yes. though you don't do that every day. Right. But I think it's a nice way to collect your thoughts. And another thing is if you're trying to get ideas for a, a room or it's really just kind of any kind of creative idea, I think taking pictures too, not just writing things down, But keeping a folder on your computer or on your phone of pictures that kind of have to do with your idea or your creativity. I think that's another thing that's wonderful. You can go out and take pictures of nature. If you like a home decor, I, you know, I, when I'm out shopping, I see things all the time that I'll think, oh, I like the look of this. I'm going to do something similar to this. And I'll take a picture in a, in a store or uh, when I'm out somewhere, I might just see something that just looks beautiful to me and inspires me. And it might inspire me to do something. Maybe it's a piece of architecture, but it makes me think of something else in my room. I mean, there's so many uh, things that you can kind of translate different ways, but your inspiration, you know, may be very different from the way you interpret it and use it in your life. So I think that's another thing is to keep a lot of photos of things that just really appeal to you. Yeah, I do that on Instagram. I know there's probably a way to keep your favorites, but I don't even do that. I just if I see something on Instagram that I really like, I just screenshoot it. And mm-hmm. that way I'll also have the name of the account if I want to go back yeah, and see what else they have. Yeah. And sometimes if I'm waiting for something someplace or if I'm on a plane, I'll go through all my photos and sort of cull through. And just like you said, you know, it's not that I'm going to necessarily copy the whole room, but maybe it's just the feel or maybe it's just one piece of it. Mm-hmm. And I think, how can I now think about how I can you know, be creative in my own way and take that piece and then incorporate it in my own home. And I find that that's such a great way to collect a lot of inspiration. Sometimes you fall down that Instagram rabbit hole and you one account and they, they're linking somebody else. And all of a sudden mm-hmm. you don't even know how you got there, but you fell in love with this room. Grab a screenshot of it, keep it in there and then revisit it when you have the time. Well, and so I very much agree with you. I think Pinterest, Instagram, blogs, fabulous sources of information and inspiration. But I have to say, I feel like if that's all you do, that you're, then that to me has a limit on it. I I mean, to me, part of this really to help get your creativity going is leaving your house and going and looking at places as well. So I think it's good to do both. Oh yeah. And if you change up your usual format, you know, if you go, you know, somebody, oh, you know, look for it on Pinterest, or if you look for it here, if that's what you do all the time, and even if the picture is beautiful, it's a flat picture on your computer, right? Mm -hmm. You know, go, no, go out, see Mm -hmm. something in three dimensions, or, you know, get a Mm -hmm. book, Uh, go to a great bookstore and pick up a design book, go to the library and poke around through like, change up, the way you take in the the content and that might change up or put you on a different creative trajectory. It just makes you see things in a different way. Well, and it's interesting. I went on a home tour. I think I shared some of the photos with you around Christmas time. And I am still thinking about that beautiful house I saw 
that was uh, you know, I'm quite still a while thinking back. about that beautiful house that you well, saw, I, and I didn't even see it. You shared pictures. <laughs> you no, know, you just saw the pictures. <laughs> so I'm just saying, I, I think there's so much to to seeing these. Uh, in person. And I'm just so much enjoying my membership to the Museum of Fine Art this year. There's so much inspiration there. There's so many places to go. And I've been walking with a friend in the mornings and we're walking by all these uh, beautiful historic homes and uh, talking. And the thing about it is I'm getting out of my regular environment. I'm getting out of that routine. And the thing that's been helping me too is because I end up moving slowly in the morning is she's forcing me out the door yeah. at 730 to go for a walk. And when I come back, I feel really energized. And so I think even that exercise really helps uh, with the creative process as well. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. So another way to stimulate your creativity in a specific way is ceiling height. Again, studies have shown that expansive ceilings really help your mind just open up and let your creative juices flow. So how can you replicate that if you don't have a high ceiling. Well, lay add, on the floor. Lay on the floor. Is a good <laughs> oh, idea. really? Seriously? No. Take your shoes off. No. <laughs> no. Add vertical elements. Something tall. Something. So the idea really is to let your eye go up. So you want to have the sense that something's going up. So tall bookcases, full length drape, a very tall plant, something to draw your eye up. And another really important element of furniture placement with respect to fostering your creativity is If you have a desk or your dining table, or if you have this dedicated creative space we talked about initially, do not have the desk facing the wall. Mm, All right. That's a good point. You want to face out. And particularly Mm -hmm. 
would be particularly wonderful if you could face some sort of view. I mean, even if it's the view to the window across from your, you know, to the other apartment building, something to see out would be wonderful if that's possible. If you just have something that's facing a white wall or a painted wall, that's going to hinder your creativity. Well, I feel very strongly you really need to be able to see outside. Don't you? I think even seeing a beautiful piece of artwork is not the same as seeing outside. And I think it's kind of that, you know, how you just talked about how you feel more creative if the ceiling feels more expansive. Mm -hmm. I think if there's a window, it feels a little more expansive and you don't feel so closed in. Mm -hmm. Uh, So even though I worked so much at my desk here at the house, there's a big window in the study. So I've been able to watch people walking by and, you know, cars going by, I guess that's not that exciting, but just, just being able to see out, not that there's that much of a view. I mean, there's kind of some houses across the street and people walking by, but even that small thing, there's trees, you can see the sky. I think that really does make a big difference. Oh, yeah. Just life going by. What does everybody do in Paris? They sit at the cafes with the, their chair facing out, not even facing uh, the each other. feast. Right. To see everything that's going by. And Anita's going to love this one. Choose curved furnishings. Curved furniture, rather than straight lines, spurs greater creativity. So studies show. So they oh. add that little French chair. You oh, know, add yes. something that's got a little movement mm-hmm. to it. Add the circular mirror. We've talked about that on numerous occasions. I've mentioned adding a round mirror. They're very popular, so easy to find. And it adds this organic shape. So again, that's adding these subtle cues to allow your brain to be more creative. Well, and did you talk about the textures too in the room? I know you were talking about the the curtains, but it seems to me that any kind of coziness like throws and fabrics in the room also Surely those must also help because they kind of help you feel kind of cozy and it makes the space more inviting. So I would think that would also improve your creativity. Well, I think you're right. That is not necessarily on my list, but get this one. Studies have also shown that adding art and nostalgic elements also spurs on creativity because you feel comfortable, you feel mm-hmm. loved, you know, so something that it, you know, from your family or evokes a nice memory or something from your childhood, you know, things that remind you of good times allows you to be more relaxed. And if you're more relaxed, you can be more creative, right? It's hard to be creative if you're feeling all stiff, you're uncomfortable. Well, it makes me think too about how we talk about somebody with a piece of furniture that they, maybe they bought it at one time, but now they really don't like it. Or maybe it's something that they just inherited that they don't like and how that can really cause stress and make you feel uh, just kind of anxious. It seems like that happens a lot. And so I think this is a uh, an argument for getting that kind of furniture out of the house, getting those things that you feel stuck with on out the door because that stress is going to cause uh, you to not be so creative. So, I mean, there's another reason for you to move that inherited ugly chair out the door. Exactly. I'm sorry, Aunt Mabel. I can't take your (laughs) giant (laughs) mahogany armoire and dining set because it's going to stunt my creativity. (laughs) How about that one? Well, here's yeah, sounds good. Making it beautiful, right? Even if it's just one small area of your home at a time, make it beautiful to you because beauty begets beauty. And when it's beautiful, it allows you to be more creative, right? I mean, when you're seeing something beautiful, don't you all of a sudden just sort of innately, you're feeling more creative? You mm-hmm. know? Oh, yes. Yes, Absolutely. We were both tired of hearing people say they're not creative. And oftentimes people say that to me. And I think people say that to Anita. Oh, you just thought of that. Oh, how did you just think about that off Mm -hmm. the top of your head? Well, you know, I think about stuff about my house and your house and other people's houses and the house you visited on the showcase tour or, uh, you know, in my clients' houses. I'm thinking about houses all the time and decorations and how it affects the people that are in them. So yeah, we are exercising these creative muscles all day long. So of course, if you throw something at us, we're probably, you might not like our opinion or thought. It might not be something you'd want to do, but we're going to have a thought about it. 
right? We're going to have a way to create something in that space that's different mm-hmm. than that's there right now because we're doing it all the time. And there really is a connection between science and psychology of a space and how environmental psychology plays an important role in your creativity. It's the connection between the person and the place and how that place then impacts the person, just like the quote by Winston Churchill. Okay, what's next? Hot topic. I don't have a specific article for this one, but I thought it was an interesting topic to bring up container homes, which is a home made from shipping containers. And I knew someone that did this here, but all which she had several containers put together into, I don't know how many she used because it was a pretty big house. But sometimes people just take the one container and make it into a guest house or a a she shed, something like that. So I thought that would be interesting, a discussion topic and just kind of get your thoughts on that. Uh, So, and let me just say this, this is why people use those containers. Uh, Sometimes those are, it's kind of a green thing to do. So it keeps them from going into scrap, but they do come in some standard sizes. Also, because they're meant to carry heavy loads, they can usually stand up to some very harsh environments. Uh, I read that they can withstand a cat four hurricane. Can you believe that? Well, yeah. I mean, think of what they have to endure on these ships. Mm-hmm. So they're they're very strong and sturdy. You know, sometimes they have to do some stuff to for insulation and sealing. Uh, the used ones can cost as little as fifteen hundred dollars for for one, or new ones you can get for about six thousand. You know, they're they're in an, an inexpensive place to start. Obviously, people usually put in a window somewhere, a real door, and then often they're fitted with, uh, you know, usually they're fitted with a bathroom or something, you know, so it's not just that you take the container and throw it somewhere. So I don't know. What what are your thoughts on that, Kelly? I think it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. There are so many people to be housed. This could maybe be a great option for low-income housing, uh, temporary housing. Mm -hmm. Who knows? You know, if somebody like Katrina hits or something and you had were able to outfit some of these really quickly and get people into houses, but also for permanent housing, they they look beautiful. Can we talk about that house beautiful article you sent me with all the great pictures? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. So there is an article we could probably put into the show. I'll link to the boat. Yeah. I'll link to a couple of articles for sure. Oh my gosh. This one, there's an Airbnb in Atlanta that is a shipping container. It's this tiny little house with an orange door, French doors. It's adorable. Well, it's right. And you know, I think for a, a suburb, I think the thought of a house being built from containers, for one thing, that it would never probably pass the HOA requirements. But when I think of, uh, you know, we've got the place, the farm and round top, and people are so creative coming up with ideas for guest homes or, I mean, like a guest house on their property or, like I said, kind of a, a artist studio, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. I think this would be perfect for that. I mean, people use uh, Airstream yeah. RVs. And so I think this would be perfect for that. And when you look at the article, you'll see that there are so many creative ideas. And if the person has a little bit of money to throw at it and some creativity, you can make a really amazing home with these. I cannot believe the one that's in Brooklyn. I, it's an, also an Airbnb. And mm-hmm. then the one, my, I think maybe my favorite is the one that's out in Amagansett and Hamptons. And like only in the Hamptons would they be selling a container house for $1.4 million. (laughs) But I mean, it's on the beach. So I mean, it's right. right, right. But but in round top that, that that's people do stuff like that. And, and they, they're so creative and it's, it's usually so artistically done and beautiful. So I get that. No, I think it's fantastic. I, I loved reading these articles. So, uh, um, you know, if you're interested in this at all, just to see what people have done, uh, mm-hmm. definitely will spark your creativity to take a look at that particular article. I loved it. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at forty nine ninety. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. 
And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy-to-reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt yes okay well i think we're ready for our crushes i bought myself serena and lily linen pjs and they're in blue so I like to wear Oh, you're going to be creative now. I'm going to be very creative in my pajamas. Men's tailor type of pajama. Mm-hmm. It's called the Positano pajama. Absolutely delicious. Oh, they're beautiful. Mm. I love them. So I can put a link to them in the show notes. Well, my crush is what I spent my birthday money on. Oh! <laughs> okay. So I have to say, because I bought dishes. <gasps> I, I've got to come clean. But, but... In my defense, last year I sold and consigned and gave away, I don't know, three sets, four sets of big sets of dishes. And I just consigned three sets a few weeks ago. So you had to reload? Is that what you're saying? Well, what happened? Well, okay. uh, Should I just come out and say it? We talked (laughs) about all these vintage dishes and I was really concerned about the lead. And plus I was a little bit bored with some of the old ones, but shh. Let's okay. keep that on the down low. Okay, okay. Uh, but I was concerned about the lead content, seriously. And I just had so many. And you know what I started thinking about is the idea of the capsule wardrobe and the capsule thing. Oh, thought, you had that capsule Christmas What if idea? I just got a hmm. smaller set, not these big, massive sets? I mm-hmm. don't need, I don't need a service for 50 people. I really don't. Like I used to think I did. I don't need that. Mm-hmm. So I got a set of spode made in england and it's called kingsley Uh i will include the link where i got them where i found the absolute best prices and they are based on an archived print of spodes and of course guess what color they are purple Purple. and white perfect i was guessing purple did you hear me whispering it no, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't want to be wrong. I was like pur- by a blue, purple, purple, <laughs> purple, blue. Yeah. purple. So I, I had, it. I kept, I kept my. I think they're lilac Fiesta dishes, and they go beautifully with them. Okay, we have a question today from Carrie. Carrie B. She wants to know what is our favorite type of natural fiber rug. Now, Carrie. You might be new to us, which I think is what you said in your email. So you probably have missed episode 193. We went so far into depth. We were like way into the weave of all these different types of rugs. Like 
you know, I remember doing all that research. So it is almost exhaustive. I don't think we left any fiber unturned. So you'll get a lot of info there. As far as my favorite, I love the chunky jute rugs. Uh, I think they're soft underfoot. They're very inexpensive uh, for large sizes. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at Ikea. They had the exact same one at Ikea that I have. It's Once you see the chunky weave that I'm talking about, you'll be able to notice it in other places. It's, you know, it's not exclusive to any one place. So you can, you know, shop around for the best price. But I like that color. It's kind of a warmer caramel honey toned rather than the much lighter. Some of them are almost into the blondes and bleached looking. I don't care for that as much in my house. How about you, Anita? Uh, no, I like the bleached ones as well. I mean, definitely the sisal and the jute. I mean, I, there's so many. And then I like so many of the indoor outdoor ones that are actually kind of a faux jute or sisal. So there's mm-hmm. just so many beautiful ones, but I'd say go listen to the episode. It's all there. Oh yeah. That's at least 45 minutes on all of that. So I'll link that in the show notes in case uh, Carrie or anybody else wants to listen. Well, I hope you're feeling more creative. I think I just talking about all these things. I am. And sometimes everybody gets in a funk, but you need just a few things. So if you have like a little, a few little things you can do, and then we gave you some tips today, you know, some very tangible things you can do in your home or just switch in your mindset a little bit or get outside, take a walk. So fun today. Thanks so much for listening. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult with Anita and I. We can't wait to talk to you.